So we had a bearing go out on the dryer overnight. Last night we combined as long as we could. We filled everything up. All these trucks are full, the grain cart is full, the pits are full, the holding tank is full. And by 11.30 last night we had a bearing out on the auger that takes the wet grain into the leg to send it to the dryer. So we had to shut everything down. Everything is still full of corn. Obviously you can see with the weather here, we are not going to be going on beans anytime soon. It would at least be nice if we could get this fixed, get the dryer running so that we can at least go on something. Because right now, we have no capacity left and nothing's moving. So we got to fix the bearing and get that grain dryer up and running again. <laughs> Right there, that's the one. Bolt broke off inside the pulley. Got the bolt out, got the pulley off. Time to figure out how to get the bearing out of there. You didn't want to run the torch? If Jim wasn't here, I would. Jim is more experienced. Slightly. Should be good. Yeah. Uh, three quarter inch, do you have that? Yep. Oh, oh, oh. oh? Yep. Uh oh. There you go. Fixed. What a lovely day. This is supposed to be the nicest day of the week. We're supposed to have mid 70s and sunshine all day. That's not happening. At least we got the dryer up and going again, so we are drying corn. Now we're gonna have to climb inside of a grain bin. And clean another floor out. Well, we got the floor cleaned up and we got everything else going now, but now we're having trouble with a slide in the bottom of the bin here. This slide doesn't close. You can see right into the auger right there. It's supposed to be shut like that. So I got to take the flashing off here, see what's underneath there and see what we got. Well, you can't see it on the camera, but there it is, that green underneath the floor there. That's the slide that we need to be right here and it's in there a ways. We have decided that the best thing to do in this situation is to go have a sandwich and then try to engineer an idea over lunch. It's a sandwich, right? Time to go see if that slide fixed itself. I ate an entire package of Oreos and that slide is still stuck under the floor. Got a hold of it. Now if I can get it into place a little better. Well, if you guys can see that, there's a little set screw or a set bolt right here that's loose. There's a collar that that set bolt goes through that runs on the shaft underneath here and it's letting this gate be loose and not slide in there. So I've just got to get something to tighten that now that I got the gate in place. For Pete's sake. Simple as that, just annoying. Echo! Ouch. We shut the air system down and switched over into the bin we just cleaned out. We checked all the pipes back here, or this pipe anyway to make sure it was supported and not shaking around because that's what causes them to blow apart and do stuff like that. And uh, it appears as though everything's going good. So we are now going into bin number two. That bin is not full. We filled it about half to two thirds full. What we'll do is run the fans on it for a couple more hours and then take the center out and pull the center out of it and cycle it through because the center gets full of a lot of fines. 
gets a lot of uh, red bees wings in there we call it and I guess we call it, it it's foreign material when you bring it to the elevator rather than corn you get chunks of cob in there and bees wings and stuff like that and it all kind of falls into the center of the bin and that's where you have aeration problems and that's where a lot of your problems start so we'll core the bin we call it where we run just the center out to pull that out of there and cycle it through the system again to spread those fines out so that they're not so contained right in the center of that bin. As long as we got downtime and this thing is in the yard, we have an O-ring on our hose here. One of these two, I gotta figure out which one it is. I think it's the bottom one because it used to be the top, so yeah, there. We are leaking out of there, we're gonna throw an O-ring in there. to use metric crescent wrenches whenever I'm working with hydraulics. Well that wasn't very tight I suppose because the ring had blown out. And I'll go get this welded up. I'm hoping this is the one here. Looks a little bit thick. Yeah, I'll try it. I think that'll do. For Pete's sakes, Beck. <laughs> I got hydraulic fluid on my record button. Oh no. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> what is that? Slime. What? <laughs> you have slime? Hey. Hydraulic coupler is fixed. Now we're gonna work on getting some tillage going. The ripper is ready. We gotta go through and get some tools in this thing. Yeah. Well, it's definitely not a good day to take soybeans. There's gonna be no soybeans taken out around here. Uh, they are soaking up all this moisture and it just keeps getting wetter and wetter out here. Luckily, the ripper should be able to go in this. It's not like it's raining hard enough to really make a mess of things. Uh, Dad is hoping to try and take some of this corn out here, uh, he may or may not try it. I don't know, if it's too wet, the silks will stick in the sieves and we'll have some problems. So he's gonna stay back and try to decide whether or not he should do that. In the meantime, I'm gonna take the deep ripper out here and uh, see what we got, set this thing up. Alright, so a couple of things I'm looking for on this. First thing I want to look for is the depths. I gotta hold my camera like this because the rain is spitting on the lens. It is miserable out here. Uh, but I'm checking the depths of everything, making sure that looks good. And just making sure it's doing a good job of all the different functions on it. The front discs, the uh, main shanks, the nine shanks, the leveling blades, and the mulcher in the back. Just making sure that everything's running good. In my opinion, we're going plenty deep with everything, but this field is uh, probably one of our lighter soiled fields. It's a little bit lighter, and uh, I know we got some compaction issues in this field, so for now I'm gonna leave it deep and watch it and kind of think about it. Um, I'm gonna leave it right here for a couple rounds and see what I think. I have decided that for sure these front disc blades are running deeper than I want them to. It's taking a lot of power. I'm gonna throw one extra spacer in the rams here just to stop them from going quite so deep. That's all it does. Stops this hydraulic cylinder from moving so far and it'll hold them up a little bit higher. I've decided now that I need to split the difference and go with thinner shims. This is difficult to do with one hand. I'm going to give it one more check on the depth here. Um, we're not going maybe as deep as maybe we should, but you kind of line up, find the line that the shank goes into, and get down in there. And you can see that's a solid six inches. I decided to leave it. 
So there's an old farmer driving down a gravel road in his pickup truck, and he gets pulled over by the sheriff. The sheriff walks up to the truck, says, excuse me, sir, I don't know how to tell you this, but do you realize that your wife fell out of the truck a couple miles back? The old farmer looks over at the empty seat next to him, looks back at the sheriff, says, oh my God, thank goodness. I thought I had gone deaf. I admit I stole that one from an Egg Daily article that the farm babe had written. There's not a whole lot to do out here on Auto Steer now that I got this thing set. Uh, an hour and a half ago the corn has dried up enough dad's out here going by himself right now he's just dumping on the end into the grain cart and running it right up into the yard and I'm gonna stay out here until I catch up to him supper is here Ow! I think it dropped about 40 degrees in temperature since I got in the tractor Body break. It is not a nice evening. He's all finished combining. That is the last load right there that he's going to take off with and bring up to the house. So this is what I would call the easy part of farming. When my buddies give me crap about pushing the auto steer button in my fancy tractor and going back and forth all day long and not really having to do anything, that's what I'm doing here tonight, and uh, that is sometimes what we do. That is a part of our job. But it's the most visual and the most obvious, and it's the thing that we catch a lot of a lot of crap for. But the fact is that this is a really, really small part of what we actually do out here on the farms. This just happens to be the visual part and the part that everybody knows about. Of course, this is the end game. I mean, this is what we work for all year long is to finally come out here and harvest the crop and and do this kind of stuff but I don't get to spend every day in a tractor hitting the auto steer button going back and forth and it isn't always as simple as some people like to think it is but this is pretty cool I'm starting to get a bunch of sprinkles on the window again well I caught up to the combine in that field and it's about 10 o'clock now so it's too late for me to drive five or six miles south of here and go on either of the other two fields. So I'm just going to go chill out for the night because I'm sure I'm going to be doing the 3 a.m. rain dryer check. Looks like that thing's running. That's really all I got for today, guys. If you're a farmer, throw a comment down below and let me know what's going on in your area. I'm curious to see who's out there, who's combining, who's harvesting, what's going on. Throw me a note. I'll try to read as many as I can, but I'm honestly interested to see where everybody's at. So let me know. Thanks for watching. Check back, because we're going to keep throwing these videos out.